Hi, my name is Ethan Korngold. I'm the Division Chair of Interventional Cardiology and Structural Heart at the Providence Heart Institute in Portland, Oregon. I'm going to talk about distal radial state of the art. Here are my disclosures. So the story of distal radial is really a story of Twitter and specifically a story of radial first, this incredible community of radial first interventionalists on Twitter. And we owe great debt to Dr. Ferdinand Kimini, who uh, introduced uh, Twitter to the concept of this radio with his first tweet on February 9, 2017. This really led the way to Twitter discussion of distal radio or snuff box access. And since that time, there have been literally hundreds of cases on Twitter shown for distal radio access. Here is my first contribution to the genre on July 30th of 2018. When, uh, after learning about the technique on Twitter, I had patients with an MI show up in the middle of the night with uh, bilateral uh, traditional radio arteries occupied with IVs and Coban, and I decided right then and there I'm going to be a distal radialist. So why distal radial? A uh, few reasons. It's much easier to go when you're going left radial. It's more comfortable for the patient. The patient can use the hand without an arm board immediately after the procedure. There's faster hemostasis. You'll get less calls about swollen arms or hematoma, and there's less danger of occlusion, and we'll get into these in just a minute. So the first question I always get is, is the distal radial artery big enough? And the answer is definitively yes. So we have more data about this that came out recently. Uh, studies comparing the distal radial to the uh, proximal radial artery show that although the distal radial artery is a little bit smaller, uh, it is certainly big enough to uh, accommodate six, seven, and even eight branch uh, slender catheter. So one advantage of distal radial is faster hemostasis. So this was a, a recent study uh, in CCI. You can see it even got the cover of CCI in November 2019. And this uh, was a comparison between uh, over 200 patients with distal radial versus traditional radial showed a 99.5% success rate for distal radial access. Access time was a little bit longer than traditional radial access, uh, but looking at the complications of distal radial access, very low. So 0% occlusion, 1% stenosis, and a 0.5% AV fistula. But uh, there was a significantly lower time to hemostasis after PCI in the distal radial group. A Japanese multi-center trial uh, looking at distal radial access with over 200 patients showed, uh, again, excellent uh, uh, low complication rate with low rates of radial artery occlusion at one month. This was a recent abstract presented at EuroPCR 2020, which was a randomized controlled trial between distal radial access and traditional radial access showing that although access time is slightly longer with distal radial access, that's 2.77 minutes versus 1.32 minutes, the rate of occlusion by duplex ultrasound at 24 hours was significantly less. So radial artery occlusion of uh, 2% in the distal arm and 10.5% in the traditional radial arm. This has been held up in meta-analysis. So this is, this is a meta-analysis uh, in 2020 comparing distal radial to traditional radial, um, showing a significantly lower occlusion rate uh, of the radial artery with distal radial access compared to, tradi to traditional radial access. And diving into this, if uh, this is uh, a series uh, from Russia looking at traditional versus distal radial access, not only is there less radial artery occlusion on follow-up, but when there is occlusion in the radial artery, it's usually distal, which means that the proximal radial artery is still open, which means there is still an access site for future intervention. What's more is that the distal radial artery access site is after the takeoff of the superficial palmar arch, meaning that even if there is occlusion in the distal radial artery, the hand is still perfused. So we've talked about left-sided radial access. What's the advantage of going left-sided? Well, first and foremost, it's usually the patient's non-dominant hand, so it means a quicker and easier recovery. It's certainly how I would want to be uh, accessed if I had to undergo an intervention. Um, it's easier to manage tortuosity. 
It avoids the arterial lusoria, the aberrant uh, uh, subclavian artery, which occurs in about 1% of the population. Uh, it's easier to cannulate olema or graft. You make better use of femoral curves. Uh, there's a better table that you form on the patient for your equipment. There's a better opportunity for shielding with both uh, fixed uh, shields and also rad pads, and possibly a lower stroke rate. So this study out of the UK comparing left versus right radial access showed significantly lower in-hospital stroke with left radial artery access, perhaps because of left manipulation, less manipulation in the arch. <clears throat> now, to do this technique, ultrasound is really key to the success. I use a short micropuncture needle, a front wall puncture, and I typically do not use slender sheaths because they kink. I typically use a merit braided uh, slender sheath or uh, a traditional non-slender sheath. So is ultrasound a challenge? Well, I mean, frankly, we should be using ultrasound for traditional radial access as well. The Rouse trial showed that even with traditional radial access, uh, ultrasound leads to a fewer number of attempts, better first pass success rate, time to access, and uh, less difficult access. Now, when we talk about distal radial, it's actually referring to two access points. Um, there's the distal distal radial access and there's the snuff box access. In general, opinion has coalesced that the snuff box access is preferable because it's a straighter uh, portion of the artery where the wire is most likely to uh, pass into the radial artery. And it's also underneath the bone so that uh, it's a better target for compression with the device. So how do you achieve hemostasis? There's a number of ways. Um, this area and this artery in this location is not uh, very prone to bleeding, so many options uh, can achieve hemostasis. You can use a traditional vast band, just sort of slid down the hand. Um, you can even use a coban wrapped around the hand like a boxer. Uh, Merit Medical makes this purpose-designed device. Uh, which uh, wraps around the wrist with then a single strap that goes across the thumb. There's a left and right-sided uh, model, and they work very, very well for hemostasis and are very comfortable for patients. And really, the sky is the limit when it comes to distal radial interventions. I routinely do bilateral uh, distal radial balloon aortic valvuloplasties. I've done celiac and mesenteric stents. Uh, it's uh, available for multiple procedures. So distal radial access is the state of the art. Um, the, the question I ask patients when they come into the room is, are you left-handed or right-handed? This is the procedure that I would want, and I recommend you guys all give it a try. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me by email, ethan.corngold.province.org, or Twitter at EKGPDX. Thanks.